Candace Diller Bassett, welcome to Reality Right After. Thank you so much for being here. Wellington! Hi, Candace! It is good to see you. You look great. I love your hair. I Thank love you. Your I love your hair too. Yes. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Last time we saw each other was at BravoCon. Um, yes. I remember I saw you at one of the after parties with Chris. He was so nice. Oh, and yeah. you were so nice. Um, you're truly one of the greatest nicest housewives i've ever met because a lot of people don't know this but you're truly a nice person like out in real life like you're truly one of the kindest people i've met in real life like truly so and i say that because i've met a lot of and it's like sometimes like you get that celebrity complex but sometimes you get that real person complex and i feel like you always give candace and i love that i love that about you thank you yes it's easier to be yourself it's way to. easier to be yourself um this has been a, a truly amazing year for you from your scripted roles on tv your music and of course your residency on the real housewives of potomac we just wanted to know like how has it been how are you feeling how's everything with you right now oh my gosh um i you know, it's been so busy that this last like week, my birthday just passed and I had my annual holiday party, my ugly sweater yes. birthday party. I saw and some people there. I saw some people there. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so yeah, the people came out. Um, it was like 115 people in the house. Um, DC was in the house. DC was in the house. Yes. Um, and so I only in the last like week, I would say, have I really been able to process 2022 right. because I've been going since February, you know, we started filming Potomac and very soon after that, we started filming Hush and right. I was also finishing my MBA at the same time. And Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. I I will say I do not recommend filming a scripted show and a reality show at the same time. That That's... was like no stars. <laughs> <Do Right. that. laughs> um, it was just too much. It's too much to right. obviously Potomac is, you know, it's my real life, but um it's my real life on steroids. Right. And there was a lot of drama and then trying to like deal with real Candace stuff and then be Selena Gibson for Hush um, and memorizing lines. And like, like my character is, a, she's crazy. She's a troublemaker. She's, she's fighting and she's stealing stuff and she's being, you know, a scammer. It's crazy. So like right. trying to be that person and be Candace and be a student and be a wife and be a mom and be a sister is a lot. So I, I have been um, really processing it these last, this last week and some change. And it's, it's a lot, but you know, I'm, I'm proud of myself and I don't say that often about myself, but I'm really, I really did a lot this year and it's, you really did. It is, it's cool. It's cool to look back on everything that I've done and be proud of, of me. I definitely agree with you. I am proud of you if, you know, that means anything to you. And um, I see everything you do. And I love that. We saw you break into the script around with your appearances on Netflix, Family Reunion. And now, of course, you're starting on All Blacks, Hush. How has acting been? Is this something that you've always wanted to do? And how does it feel to finally like be breaking into that and actually be, you know, securing roles and being on, on scripted shows? Yeah, well, I've been acting for um, maybe 10 years. Okay. Um, I did a web series back in 2012, 2013. Um, I did my first independent film, um, I think in 2014. Um, and I've done like smaller things, um, since then. Uh, but yes, Netflix was, was a big, was a big deal. Family reunion was an amazing experience. Um, yeah, such a good show. Thank you. Yes, it is a great show. Um, shout out to the, to the cast there <clears throat> and the crew. Um, 
But yes, um, Hush is my first um, scripted TV series. And it's, I mean, it feels, it feels right. It's, I was, it was always going to happen. I didn't know like how or when, but it was always going to, to be a thing. So I'm really proud. Um, not only that, you know, I, I've, I've accomplished this, this goal, but that I got to do it, you know, locally, um, Mm -hmm. hush shot exclusively in the DMV, the DC, Maryland, Virginia area. Um, and um, it was shot by a, a Black-owned production company, Octet Productions. Um, and we've been really embraced by, by AMC and All Black TV. Um, and I'm, I'm excited for you guys to see it. It's episode three came out um, this week. And okay. um, it's, it's, a, it's a sexy show. It's a yeah. really, um, salacious sexy, um, scandalous show Mm -hmm. shows black women in, as we are in real life, we are multifaceted, multi-layered people. Right. Um, and, and it's, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of it. I'm really, really proud of it. And, uh, you said that it's very (laughs) steamy. Um, your character on Hush, Selena Gibson is described as a trophy wife who keeps her marriage to a high powered attorney, husband spicy by fulfilling all of his fantasies alone with others, despite the dangers. How did you prepare for this role? (laughs) Um, well, I had to talk to my husband first. Right. I was just about to say, what did Chris say about all of this? Uh, so we've talked about, we've talked about this before. Like when I met Chris, he knew that I was a daughter of the arts and that I wanted to be an actor and that I wanted to sing. And um, he's always supported that. So we knew that there would become a day when, you know, I would be called to um, show an an intimate side of a character. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we, we, we were prepared for it. We talked about it. Um, this was the most um, intimate that I've had to be with uh, a character on screen. Very intimate. Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, you prepare by just learning your character, understanding your character. Um, it doesn't hurt to have great chemistry with the person that you are being tasked with creating this relationship with on screen. And I had a great co-star in Lon Ray Daewoo, um, who plays my husband, Terrell. Mm-hmm. And um, I I had a trusting um, relationship with him. Right. Um, and we, we didn't have a lot of time. Like we got the script and then we were on set all in like a month's time. Mm-hmm. So, um, it, I was lucky that that I had a good chemistry with Lon Ray. And, you know, this we I request I requested a closed set. Okay. Um, our director, Chazatier, is amazing. Um, she is incredible. She respected both of our wishes. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a, a training and um I was I was all covered. It doesn't look like it, but I was my my special parts were covered and As should. <laughs> yeah and we you know we we did it in one take so wow yeah that's um, lucky for you because having to do something like that in different yeah. takes must be so awkward yeah no we any all of my intimate scenes we were able to get get it done and um in one take so yeah it was it was fun but it was very challenging very challenging. Yeah. What um did you reach out to anybody else for advice when it came to intimate scenes, or was this something like, you know, I've been preparing for this. Let me just let me just do it. So I did. Um, so Selena and Terrell have sex parties, right? <laughs> so, and that's not something that I, Candace, would ever do. Um, it's just not my thing. Right. But I have friends who who do, you know, engage in threesomes and go to sex parties in the DC area. Mm-hmm. So I 
reach out to one of my friends who um, who has gone to sex parties just to like, and I had talked to her before, but like just to kind of refresh and get a an understanding of that mindset and what you what do you get out of this and what does this do for you? Right. Um, so I could kind of like add that to Selena's character and share that with with Terrell's with Terrell. Um, and yeah, and then just understanding why Selena is okay with being in an open marriage. Um, Cause that is also not something that Candace is okay with. Candace, right. Candace and her husband, Chris are one woman and one man people. Right. We don't uh, do that. Right. We don't do that over here, but <laughs> you know, I, I respect people that for them it's, it is their, their way of life. And it is right. what they deem, um, what they need to function or what they want to do to enjoy themselves, whatever the right. reason is. So I, I had to go there and just, and I, I like, I did some read, some reading research on, you know, why people have open marriages so I could just understand it for myself and, and it could feel real. The girls were lucky that you shot um, Hush after Potomac because I could definitely see you bringing this up on the show. Like, I'm filming a show. I need some advice. Because some people yeah. on your cast, I feel like, could give you advice on what's going on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, so we actually, I actually filmed it at the same time. So we were, they were supposed to cover it and then they didn't cover it. Got but it. when I, I arrived to Miami, to the Miami trip late because I because was there. because you were doing this, um, yeah. talking about the Miami trip and how impactful it was for the show. But specifically, I want to talk about your Miami experience. Let's get into the music. Seeing you walk into a studio to work on a feature with Trina. Like, eh. I would be remiss to say that we don't acknowledge the fact that Trina is a huge hip hop icon. She's an icon. She is She's a... truly an icon. Yes. So how did it feel to be a new artist and to come up with this song insecure, which is such a bop. Like I love insecure yeah. and to have Trina featured on that, on that, on that song. How does that feel? I don't know. It, I mean, <laughs> I, it feels, it doesn't feel real. It still doesn't feel real. Like I, I have to play it sometimes to remember that that's my reality. Right. Um, but you know, I, so when we were figuring out that Insecure was going to be the debut single um, for Deep Space Deluxe, we, my manager was like, we need to have a feature. We need a feature, we need a feature. And I was like, well, who, like, like you said, I'm a new artist. Who are we going to ask to feature on this song? Right. Um, and we had a list of people and Trina was at the top of my list. Of course. I was like, Trina ain't about to do nothing over here with little old new me. Um, so when she, when she said yes, I was like, what? Like, are you sure? Right. Um, and she was so cool. Like she, I mean, you saw in the episode, like yeah. she, that's really how she is. She's so chill. Her energy, her vibe is like, like water. She's just there. She's just chilling and just like very kind. Very zen. I very like zen. She's... Very chill. Very kind. Very, um, very much like a homegirl sister. She gave me really great advice. Um, about how to, you know, avoid drama and deal with haters and deal right. with naysayers and, you know, how to keep my head down and just work. Um, she's just, she's awesome. Like, she's amazing. And she, her, her verse is fire. Incredible. <laughs> like, when I heard it, you, you saw I was like about to cry. Um, and then she did the visual, which, mm -hmm. you know, I did not expect her to say yes to because like, Trina is busy. The, like yeah. Trina, is still, Trina is working. She's still out here getting her bags and working. Absolutely. So for her to take the time out of her schedule to come to DC and shoot this visual with me, 
Um, and it almost didn't happen because she like, it was like every every weapon formed against her was trying to prosper, getting her to DC. It was tornadoes, it was oh flight cancellations and weather. And but she got there and you know, she was such a trooper and just thugged it out with us and was amazing. She is amazing. And she's she's we've done other interviews. We did an Instagram live together, and she's like, she's got a lot of like great projects coming up. Mm -hmm. and Still carves out time to you know help me promote my song. So I love Trina. Trina. Is no, we we I've always been a fan of Trina, of course, because her music. And then yes. as a fan of reality TV, she's on Loving Hip Hop Miami. So yes. I love watching yes. her on there. So yes. I've to me as a fan of television, it was like my two worlds were colliding where yeah. you on Hero Housewives of Potomac. Now we see Trina. You guys yeah. are working on a sh on a song. The song is a bob. She laid them lyrics down. I was like, down. wow, this yeah. verse that she did on your song is really good. Like she, the song was really good. But when Trina comes in, I was yeah. like, this is such a great song. It cements the song. And yeah. sometimes I don't like hip hop on R&B records like yeah. I feel like it might be too much of a mix but yeah. you guys did that perfectly shout out to your team shout out to the people that work with you That's great. it's it, it, it's truly a great song so you recently just did a tour where you were all over the place talk to me how touring is like what rehearsals you know getting ready for shows how do you deal with all of that oh my gosh um so yes, shout out to City Winery for taking a chance on me and giving me five cities. Um, we started in Philly, we went to Chicago. We'll be doing Nashville um, next year. We did Atlanta and we finished in DC. Um, I'm waiting for you to come to New York. There. Yes, I'm coming to New York. Okay, I, will, I'm coming to New York. Yes, that is happening. I'll be there. Um, yes, thank you. I can. I can't wait to see you again. Of course. Um, so touring is everything crazy that you can imagine right. and that you cannot imagine. We had we had tour bus drama. We had we really only had like a little bit of drama, but like there was def there were definitely challenges. Like, oh my god, we got to get to the next city. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you know what's wrong with my in ears? They're not working today, mm -hmm. or you know. There was just, there were like little things, but we, we, as I like to say, we thugged it out and we made it work. And it was, it was an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. um, overall, I, I, I can't complain because I've heard like JoJo's tour bus caught on fire. I don't even remember that. Like, yeah. Crazy things happen on tour buses and on Definitely. tour buses. So overall, I'm I had a great experience and I I I still can't believe that we did that. Like, and it feels like it happened like two years ago, mm -hmm. not two months ago. So it's I'm I'm in awe of again my team and myself for you know buckling down and getting it done. The rehearsals, oh my gosh, they it was such a huge undertaking. Um, to learn all of the choreography and to arrange the music. Shout out to my music director, Aaron Hardin, for his brain. Right. It's just incredible. Because um, turning recorded music into a live show is not easy. It's not. And if you don't have the right ears and the right talented people who can make that transition, your show could be a flop. Yeah. And my live set is the, it's amazing. Like it is incredible. I, I could listen to my, my live set, you know, over and over and over again. Right. Um. So yeah, it, it was amazing. And I feel like it was a, it was really ambitious because I'd never toured before. I'd only done a few live shows before. Um, so to go from, you know, starting really small to here, go on tour and do five cities and, you know, get on a bus and travel across the country was, uh, was really ambitious and, and we did it and you did it. I feel like I can do anything. Right. Yeah. I would love to see like a web series, you behind the scenes going touring your team, like yeah. Bravo, well, let's get it. Let's get a show. And we, we pitched it. Okay. We okay, did. I but hope it gets green later. Time, there wasn't enough time. 
that's that's that was the there's gonna be a lot more tours coming your way so don't worry i feel like it could happen um i actually have such a funny story because not that it compares to what you go through every day but bravocon yes legends ball yeah we were performing we did a medley at the end where yeah some of the housewives performed yeah. and um when we were rehearsing because of course my listeners know this i'm a producer i watch what happens live yeah. when we were rehearsing um, I remember they were like, we need standings, we need standings, and we need yeah. someone to standing for Candace. And they were like, Wellington, get in there. And I did your standing. No, you did <laughs> I'm, I have to send you like the videos and oh um, my God. the images of me doing your yes, standing. To me. <laughs> oh my God. It oh was my God. literally such a moment for me. I'm like in stage singing to D space. <laughs> And I am cackling on stage. It was hilarious. Shut up. Yes, yeah. You got the deep space drive back experience. And I even like, that. even it like doing that, I'm like, wait, this is a long ass set. Like how yeah. is like, everybody had like a cute little, yeah. you know, 10 second situation. You yeah. had a very long part of the Legends yeah. Ball medley. So that yeah. was amazing. You did truly amazing. And you know, I've heard you say that it's been not difficult, but one of the things that you really focus on is the fact that you don't want to just be a housewife singing. You singing is very important to you. And because so many housewives do this singing thing, you want you want it to come across different from the others that it may just be a hobby for them. For you, this is your career. So I think that it showed in that performance because you like you look like an artist. You were an artist. You know what I'm saying? Like the it, it was it was there like i applaud you it was crazy it was good um so what is your favorite song to perform on stage oh my gosh uh well drive back is obviously one of my favorites the live version of drive back is mm -hmm. so disgusting it is really good uh, we performed it first on kelly clarkson and i just that is my favorite performance to listen to, to watch, and to perform. I love the choreography. I love the arrangement. It's fun. It's typically, when we did it on tour, it was the last song of my set. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like you close out with this song that everybody knows. Yeah. Everybody's trying to yeah. jam into it. Um, and then actually from my, my new project that's coming out on December 30th, Deep Space Deluxe, I performed yes. a couple of songs um, from the Deluxe. Um, and one of them was a song called Do It Again. Okay. And I I just love that song. I love performing it live. It's The live version is different than the studio version. Um, and it just, it's a sexy song. It's very R&B. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, it's a little bit talk singy in the beginning. It's a good song. So when I when I come to New York, I'll, I'll probably do that one. Ooh, but by I'm then, excited. by then, <clears throat> the album will be out. But it'll be it's it's cool to hear. Like I always love when I when I love an artist and I know their um, records, and then you hear them live. I love to hear how artists like freak the live version of. It. I agree. I so, agree you'll you'll enjoy the differences in that i feel like it definitely makes it like a special experience when you go see an artist and they give you like an extra mile of let me perform yeah. this song that you already know but in a different yeah. way so it's still special to your experience so i love yeah. that you do that we saw some of the your bravo fam came out to your your atl show how was it to perform in from some of your peers it was amazing right. it was cool um I heard the cameras were rolling, so you might be on the Real Housewives of Atlanta next season. That's what I heard. I don't know. Is that what they said? I don't know. The streets are talking. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. No, it was so. Um, Candy is is someone that I have always musically and just as a businesswoman looked up to. Um, Correct. And. So I was in a girl group in high school and she actually mentored our girl group for a short time. Um, wow. And, then, you know, you, I, we, I lost touch with her after that. Yeah. So then to kind of come back into this housewife space and, um, and we kind of, we, 
we connected in the housewife space and mm -hmm. but then to have her come to my show and she's she when I when Deep Space first came out she was reposting it she was very supportive um and to have her be at my show in Atlanta was amazing to just have right. you know an artist a triple threat like her to support right. me and to you know really appreciate and enjoy my music was great and then just to have all the girls there they yeah. were they you know they were standing up they were singing yeah. and, i saw so, the videos chair yeah it was it was really cool and really humbling and like we, like weird like because i'm 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 actually a shy person so like in the moment i can't think about it but then when i got off stage i was i i had like a panic attack like oh my god these these women who are you know a part of pop culture history who I watched before I was a housewife I I watched Atlanta and I always say Atlanta walked so Potomac could run they are you know a, a huge part of pop culture pop culture history in general yep have them you know support me in that way was so cool and really sweet of them yeah and one thing is like have people in the room listening to you and another thing is having people in the room and bopping to you standing and <laughs> you know loving the energy so i i i thought that was great i love when the bravo worlds collide and yeah. we see you know the housewives supporting each other yes in one of my favorite parts about insecure is when you say if you got a problem come see me about it i know you got a problem I think you're insecure. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? What were you thinking? <laughs> Give me the tea on that little insecure part. <laughs> so, okay. So it's twofold. And I always say, you know, I like for my music to be multidimensional. So I want mm -hmm. it to have more than one meaning. So insecure on the nose is about a guy being insecure about his girl and, you know, being too much of a, a bitch because the first line is I'm not used to dealing with a bitch get over it um so you're you're acting like and that bitch. line slap <laughs> um get over it and you know I've I've been in a relationship where the guy I was dating just he couldn't he couldn't handle all of this yeah, they can't handle it <laughs> and you know you gotta you gotta go to the left because I'm I'm not stopping my train absolutely not you know, one insecure man is not stopping this show. Nope. Um, and that's something that a lot of people can relate to. Um, being in a relationship where somebody's trying to dim your light and steal steal your shine or just just snuff you out. Right. Um, and I'm a fire sign, so you can't snuff out this fire. So that was that's the original kind of meaning. But then underneath that, because I'm I'm a I'm a subliminal girl. I like to, you know. To, to be subtle and, and subtly, subliminally tweet and speak. Um, so it's also kind of about, you know, certain women who may right. be pure and can't handle all of this glitter once again. And, you know, if, if you're insecure, that's, that's your problem. That's come, your problem. Come see me about it. Cause I'm <laughs> always available. My porch light is always on as I say. <laughs> we, we can have a conversation about why you feel the need to, hate and shame and criticize me it's not me issue beloved. it's not it's not me it's you, you it's funny because every time we always see like when a guy breaks up with a girl or in any relationship you have that um yeah. that excuse like oh it's not me it's you yeah. so it's funny that you say it like that when it comes to friendships because mm -hmm. that could be really true okay. um gray say way into you know we have to get into some of the irish ob stuff um this season kicked off with some controversy around your husband who I've met personally and was great to me. And he was such a kind person. Um, Giselle has accused Chris of making her feel uncomfortable at the reunion, implied he was interested in her in some ways that we still don't know what she's talking about. Um, this has sparked some conversations around sexual assault before we dive in. I wanted to check in with you. Like, how when you saw that of course we see the the fourth wall moment where you break the fourth wall and you know which was iconic um how did it make you feel though like you've been on the show for so many seasons you've been 
through so many things on this show. Yeah. And when you think like, you know, these are women that I've been around for a long time, women that I've defended and in a way been on their team yeah. for a very long time. How did it make you feel to see that Chris was somewhat the target? Well, you you kind of said it. It's it is it's a shock to the system when you think you know people and surprise, you don't. Um, for me, it was kind of almost like the final nail in the coffin for like believing in certain friendships. Right. Um, and, you know, my, my I have I have an old Southern black mama and <laughs> she has always said to me, you know, you can only count on your family. Everybody, your friends are always going to, they're always going to test you and do you wrong. You, you got to be careful who you trust. And I would always say, no, you know, these my friends, you, I can trust my friends. And, you know, the older I've gotten, the the more I, that has rung true, and unfortunately. And this was, this was no different in that, you know, I thought I knew people and I don't. And right. And it's, it is very hurtful that people would choose to go down this road when there are so many other things to talk about or, you know, share mm -hmm. or not, you know, or not. Or not. And, and it's, it just, it makes me question everything that I thought I knew about people in the in this group because you know what else will you say right you have no idea what people will say and it's it just it's it was a shock it's still a shock i know that i probably should be asking chris this question but how is chris feeling with all of this like how how does he keep this is something that we're still seeing every week on the show somewhat somehow being brought up i know it must be hard on you but to be the subject of you know, this conversation and this storyline on the show and seeing that play out every week, like, how does that make Chris feel? I mean, imagine if you were accused of, you know, what he's been accused of. Right. And you are forced to, not even if you don't watch it, you're forced to answer questions from friends and family and loved ones and strangers on the internet about your character how and and you really can't defend yourself fully um how would you feel it's it's a hopeless feeling mm -hmm. um it is a, it's an anxious feeling it's a sad feeling it's a depressing feeling and those are all emotions that he has um experienced and and it's all new to him because you know chris is chris is a guy he's like you know i'm not involved in this silly stuff. I'm here to support my right. wife. Um, but you know, this season he didn't really have a choice in his involvement because he was mm -hmm. unfairly brought into someone's takedown story. Right. Um, so yeah, he's, it's been imaginatively hard for him and, and me because, you know, I feel a, a responsibility to go to war for him. And absolutely, I I have the responsibility as his partner to shoulder him and to be his safety net, and I've I've had to really show up in that way, and that's right. been um, <clears throat> a lot. It's been a lot. I can only imagine. Do you feel like Giselle's feelings were genuine, or do like why like do you why now why now? I think. The people should ask her that. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna make that my mission. Yeah. I'm my journalistic my journalistic yeah. brain is working. <laughs> yeah. Um to kind of um just the last thing on this Potomac stuff, you and Ashley, we kind of like we kind of see that finally you guys you guys started to like groove a little bit, then he falls off. You and Ashley kind of go down in history in Bravo history as like those frenemies that we love. Giselle and um Karen, you and Ashley, Kenya and Portia, you know, Nini and Kim. Like we we know these frenemies that become iconic. Um is it really just fun shade or like, like what, what's the tea with you and Ashley? Like, is it like, 
I don't know. I <laughs> I do not have the answer. I, from my purview, I always approached Ashley in a genuine way and mm -hmm. wanted. Ashley brought me onto the show. Right. So I always say like Ashley is like the vampire that bit me and made me a housewife. I'm crying. <laughs> uh, like that's how I looked at it, and right. I. Because of that, I always was prepared in my mind to have an unwavering loyalty to her because mm -hmm. you brought me into this group, introduced me to this world. Um, and she didn't see it that way. Um, and I have retired from, you know, giving grace to people who just clearly are not interested in right. friendship. You're interested in chaos and you know you you can you can have that on your own i don't right. i don't need that chaos um we saw recently i this recently came up so i wanted to ask you um giselle and robin were on the sherry show and they were asked like about how they are you know sometimes the not sometimes all the time the fans of the show feel like there is a colorism problem in the show and how do they feel about it and these you know critiques about how they treat certain women on the show their response was you know we don't listen to social media we don't listen social media doesn't pay us so into social media starts paying us we're not really going to listen to the trolls and the and the creep and the critics whatever um to being one of the darkest uh, women on this show and seeing the treatment of Wendy this this season, especially with the violent moment that happened to her and how Mia threw a drink and was very violent with her and that kind of was swept away. Um, what? How do you think you guys can fix this issue? Is it fixable or like, and do you think there's value in having this conversation on camera? I absolutely think that we have a responsibility to have these conversations simply because our art imitates life. And, yeah. you know, this is, this is our, well, it's my real life. And I feel like I have a responsibility to reflect what I see and what is happening in society. Right. Um, it's why I speak openly this season about my egg freezing journey. It's why I am always trying to be the most candid, most authentic version of myself because I want people who look like me to see themselves reflected in the culture. Right. And Potomac is the culture. We, have, really we have ascended to that that position. Um, and it's 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 almost irresponsible to not um, speak on the realities of the society and the world that we live in. Um, but we can only do that if everyone is willing to acknowledge. Right. Um, and, and we're not there yet. We're not there yet. That's really sad because I do agree. I think that as people of color, as black people, we have the responsibility in any platform that we have to showcase what you know, we know we know what goes on behind the scenes. We right. grew up being ourselves and being in these white spaces and going right. through, you know, college and working in corporate and how right. black people are, you know, treated every day yeah. by their counterparts and just because of who they are. So yeah. I think it's it's important to showcase that. And I agree with you. Listen, Candace, I think that you're so open and I definitely admire you for that. And I admire you for the fact that you always seem to put things on the forefront that you care about you, you know, you're open about your life, the things that are happening in, in your marriage and to be a reality star and be full in, trust me, it's hard being a reality star. It really is. Not I would say, park. I would say it's easier to work in scripted where you can film something and go yes. hide yes. Than, it, than it is to work in a reality show, especially yes. an ensemble reality show with other women where it's yes. about friendships. Yes. So I want to give you your flowers because that it's hard and doing it while creating a successful music career must be hard. So I just want to give you your flowers. I appreciate you. And thank you so much for talking to me today. Like I really, you're one of my favorites. Um, to all of our listeners, let us know where we can find you. Uh, let us know when the uh, Deep Space Deluxe drops. Let us know what's coming up. So you can 
find me on all social media platforms at the real Candice. Um, my album Deep Space Deluxe drops December 30th. The visual to Insecure with Trina um, drops on the 18th. So that's in like a couple of days. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah, so I am ex- I'm so excited for everybody to see the visual. It's so good. It's just so well done and just just wait just wait till you see it. It's you're you're right. going to gag because I I've seen it and I still gag. Um and oh hush my scripted series it premieres every, every or premiered 3 weeks ago but it airs every Thursday on okay. all black TV. Um so check your streaming platform you can get it on busy. Amazon so find it and and let us know right. what you think. Um yeah and I'm I am I'm resting I think for the remainder of the year but there there's a lot to come. Um touring shows um more scripted stuff coming in 2023. Um, I'm getting ready to sign on to do another, an independent film um, next year. So there's a lot. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Um, To all of our listeners, thank you so much for listening to me today. This has been another episode of Reality Right After with Wellington Gomez. You know, we come on here to talk everything about reality TV and kind of get an inside look of the stars that we love all the time and that we see every week. Candice, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, You're such a friend to this brand and to this platform, and we really are so grateful for it. And we wish you the best. Happy Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Happy holidays. Say my love to all of the people around you um, and just wishing you the best. Thank you. All right. Well, have a good night, day, afternoon, yes. Candice. <laughs> have a good life. I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon at the New York show. Yes. I need to come to the New York show. I for promise. Sure. I will let you know. Yes. <laughs> all right. Have a good one, Candice. Bye-bye.